guys now we are going to discuss about descriptive statistical methods within the descriptive statistical method we need to understand why we are doing what are all the measures and matrices available how we are doing these are all the questions we are going to discuss about in general types of statistics categorized into descriptive statistics inferential statistics when it becomes inferential statistics further it is classified into estimation and hypothesis testing when it comes estimation we will be going for point estimation or interval estimation what it is each and every type is for the type of discussion we are going to carry out now what is descriptive statistics study the basic features of the data it describes about the data it shows it makes to give the summarization or uh, the way of uh, pattern exist what is in it what the data says in order to understand the existing data points and its summary report is termed as descriptive statistics descriptive statistics we can do with uh, statistical analysis as well as we can do with visual analysis visual analysis predominantly we use all the kind of histogram plot scatter plot kind of uh, relationship analysis these are all those things termed as descriptive statistics cross tabulation these are all the uh, calculations we will be carrying out with the descriptive what are all those calculations we will be looking at further when it comes inferential statistics we study the pattern randomness uncertainty in the data insights of the data upon the sample we will do the study that we will be subjecting to the population let us say for one example inferential statistics when the inferential statistics plays a role for the covid people are finding out vaccination that vaccination is not applied across the population they will be picking the volunteers those are all samples whatever the pros and cons merits or demerits were good or bad happens with those sample that is info to the entire population that is called inferential statistics even if you understand any drug discovery anything newly comes in the pharmaceutical department they don't apply for each and every one of us they will be applying for few samples few patients then that inferences they will be concluding to the entire population by the time some error some eruptions or some kind of disorders or other symptoms allergy may come that and all the study later part they will do while discovering a new drug after the discovery first they will go for animal uh, uh, treatment then they will go for human treatment after the human treatment they will take certain period of study duration after that they will be bringing to the commercial market or applying to the larger population this is one example for inferential method it is not statistics it's inferential hope so you would be understanding so we will be taking sample data set analyzing the data understanding the data our prediction then that inferences we are applying to the entire population that is called inferential statistics whatever we are doing in the machine learning deep learning mostly we are doing inferential statistics only descriptive supports to build the model all the model whatever we are doing those all model belongs to inferential statistics again there is one more definition statistics descriptive statistics inferential statistics when it comes to descriptive statistics you can go for summarizing organizing sorting filtering these all called descriptive statistics or else you can go for measure of variability measure of central tendency covariance measure of variability you can uh, calculate variance covariance standard deviation these all shows variability tables and graphs so these are all the part when it comes inferential statistics estimation and hypothesis testing these two would be helping for entire uh, inferential statistics so what is this tools for generalizing beyond the actual observation it is for generalizing we do observation that observations we will be subjecting to the entire population see generalizing from a sample to a 
population. This is what I have one more uh, graph also in order to make you to understand population and uh, sample. If if not, try to understand in this way. I want to study about M Tech students learning behavior. If I start doing the analysis or reporting or kind of research or investigation upon M Tech student, the immediate question you will be raising. M Tech student only for BVRIT or M Tech students only for Hyderabad or M Tech students only for computer science or M Tech students only for India. You will be questioning. So that is determined as population. What is my boundary condition for the problem statement within that population? Next question. Is it feasible to get the data about all the MTech students within that boundary condition? What is that boundary condition? I'm telling you, only within Hyderabad city. Try to do the investigation, the learning behavior of MTech students. This is what your problem statement. Immediate question what you will ask, what is my population? It is not sample. Within that I need to fix. It is for entire India, you need to do the study or survey or you need to do only for our college. Then you need to fix the chronological order, which year to which year. So many questions required. So population is what the entirety. Sample is what what you are the data considering for the investigation that is sample. So inferential is what from the sample, whatever we got the inside that we are trying to generalize to the entire population. As I mentioned earlier, in the medical professional uh, uh, methodology, they will be administering drugs for only samples, 10 patients or 100 patients. Then based on the observation among those people, they'll be generalizing to the entire population. Similarly here also, you will be taking sample data, then you will be doing investigation whatever the insight or observations you are finding it out that is going to become generalized for the entire population. Now let us discuss descriptive statistics alone one by one. What are all the way we can do the descriptive statistical analysis? Measures of frequency. This is called measures of just to doing count, percentage, frequency calculation, how often something occurs, the pattern, who is whether among this data or within MTech, whether female students are preferring to study MTech or male students are preferring to study MTech. That kind of frequency, what is the maximum occurrence? What is the minimal occurrence? That kind of study or pattern. Use this when you want to show how often a response is given. So this is always useful for giving back the response. So how it is suitable for particular category. So always descriptive statistics will give you a rough idea moving to the inferential statistics. After inferential analysis or statistics, how we need to give back the response to the respective categories. That is how this is helpful. Next, measures of central tendency. Mean, median, mode. This is widely popular. Most of the time people use this mean median mode. Locates the distribution by various points, different points of distribution. Univariate analysis, only one variable you can plot. Bivariate relationship analysis. Between two variable you can do the analysis. You can go for correlation or you can go for non-linear estimation, non-linear relationship analysis. Correlation is for linear relationship analysis or you can go for scatter plot. What is the pattern it takes? Some you can analyze the pattern of distribution. We are going to the next topic soon after this is probability distribution, types of distribution. By the time you will understand much more better. How an average or most commonly indicated response? That's all. Use this. Which is the sample comes more? See, if I run a e-commerce business, whether which uh, male customers are more for me or female customers are more for me, I can do the frequency analysis. Or I can do the analysis which region people are coming more, which postal code, or uh, which kind of uh, or uh, age group, uh, whether adult age or old age or senior citizen, or kids, something like that. We can understand the pattern. Next, 
measures of dispersion or variation popularly used are range variance standard deviation so these are all. next this all identifies the spread of spores by starting intervals so through intervals you can able to identify what is the spread of spores range how you will calculate between high and low points maximum value and the minimum value you will find out the range max minus min or absolute value of min minus max anything you can do finally you need to find out the range variance or standard deviation so difference between observed score and the mean mean becomes variance if you take a square root it becomes standard deviation use this when you wants to show how spread out the data how the data are spread out what is the meaning of spread out let us see for example there are 12 students in your class imagine there is a subject called data analytics within the data analytics roll number 1 score is 65 roll number 2 score is 69 roll number 3 score is 90 roll number 4 score is 87 roll number 5 like this i am going to give spread see i am going to the lower value also i am going to 99 also so now i am giving this what is the spread of distribution where the highest values are accumulated where the lowest values are accumulated the spread of distribution if we look at here if i am dividing this data into two different set 65 69 5 point exactly 10 points are available let me do like this if i do like this this has what kind of distribution this has here low variance see more or less all the values are nearly packed here high variance why the high variance see minimum value is 0 maximum value is 99 then what will happen naturally the variance will become high here variance will become low this is called variance analysis how the variance are spread out the data how spread out the data are how it is spread so here it is very very closer to the average if you calculate this separately average the variance would become more here here the variance would become lesser because all the data points are close to each other more or less close at least say although it is 56 it is little bit closer what is the difference look at these two highest deviation look at these two 98 and 12 highest deviation 34 and 99 highest deviation only these two points are having lesser deviation 90 and 99 this is called spread of the data or the variance so these are all those point we can understand for this if you are relying on languages like python and r code with a simple statement you can do this uh, variance interquartile range or variance analysis or standard deviation anything you can do in a fraction of second with one single plug in of commands next measure of position percentile rank quartile rank these are all the two famous ranks we will be using for measure of position how score fall in relation to another one what relationship this data are fall in within the group here again in order to do this we are dependent on standard score standard deviation or standard scores then use this when you need to compress score to a normalized score so these all useful for towards normalized value calculation this spread of data or measure of positions are useful for this these are all interdependent the moment we do this count count is dependent here central tendency central tendency is dependent on uh, dependent for this calculation these are all dependent on these calculations this all interrelated coming to the estimators point estimation interval estimation let us understand this clearly through these two examples look at the mean annual rainfall of melbourne so just you are calculating mean annual rainfall if you know the rainfall rate for 365 days just rainfall 5 5 mm 10 mm rainfall so whatever the rainfall per day happened throughout 365 days some days no rain so 0 mm all together you need to maintain a record finally you need to go for calculating the average simple calculation 
this is one best example for point estimation what is called interval estimation in 80% of all years melbourne receives between this to this range we are putting a boundary so we are trying to calculate 80% that is secondary come to this 440 mm to 800 mm range so we are trying to calculate the rainfall estimate within these conditions whenever you are trying to do this boundary conditions then it becomes interval estimate point estimate we don't segregate given the statement we do analysis for the entirety whenever we approach interval estimate in 80% of all years melbourne receives between this to this true or false we need to validate really melbourne received rainfall between these two boundary if it is if a number of days or more less than 440 also we fail reject number of days rainfall goes more than 800 also we need to reject most of the time rainfall if it would have happened between these two given boundaries only then we will accept whenever we are approaching interval estimation immediately hypothesis testing comes null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis or acceptance or rejection <clears throat> there is a relationship there is no relationship we need to establish for example within this yes first we need to claim 80% of the time melbourne receives the rainfall between 400 mm to 800 mm yes alternate is there is no rainfall between the specified boundaries we are trying to tell we need to go for calculation after calculation we can calculate t test we can calculate step test we can go for z test all those statistical calculation we need to do then we need to compare with the p value we need to set the confidence interval then we need to compare with the p value depending upon the p value either we will go with the null hypothesis or we will go with alternate hypothesis this is called hypothesis testing point estimation no need to formulate the hypothesis when it becomes interval estimation we need to formulate the hypothesis look at descriptive statistics methods of organizing summarizing or presenting the data we said now we need to do a gallup poll found that 49% of the people in a survey knew the name of the first book of book it is bible the statistics 49 describes the number out of every 100 persons who knew the answer something like this generalizing how many percentage says that says about name of the first book of the bible who is ready to give answer depending upon that we can calculate the moment i start giving you a question something like the question answer session i'm conducting how many of you you are able to give answer depending upon that i can calculate 40% of the students able to give very best answer 40% of the students giving moderate answer rest of the 20 students couldn't able to give answer at all that kind of distribution or descriptive way summarizing it is useful that's all <clears throat> next coming to the inferential statistics look at this figure population sample we draw sample from the population <clears throat> or individual also either collection of data point or one data point we do all the calculations or analysis whatever we do on sample we are bringing back generalizing to the population as well <clears throat> a decision a decision estimate prediction or generalization about the population whether you can do decision or you can go for prediction or you can do estimation or you can do generalization all are interchangeable words anything you do based on sample towards population it is termed as inferential statistics that's all <clears throat> now come to inferential statistics example say look at uh, while uh, female are trying to cook or male also can cook that is a different uh, scenario while cooking we will be tasting whether salt proportion or spicy proportion these all are going well we will be taking a drop and we will be tasting so any time 
sample only tested based on that one drop of taste one drop of sambar taste will be generalizing the entire sambar goes well or something wrong i need to make it to be mixed with some other ingredient we will add some ingredient or we will add water something we try to do and we will make up to the best taste that is called sample for yeah, inspection time people will come to the institution they will inspect not on all the teachers data point all the students data point they will draw the sample they will take decision based on the samples how many they are visiting and what is the pros and cons happening with each sample they will conclude and take decision so that is called inferential statistics see testing or quality validation of the wine people will not consume the entire wine they will be tasting a drop among the entirety then they will take decision depending upon the quality and the taste especially wine sale is a popular analytics wine price prediction wine quality prediction that is a popular uh, analytics even if you can find this data wine data in the kaggle data set it's a very popular uh, it's a what to say million dollar analysis wine rate is fixed based on the quality and based on the taste so these two only determines the price of the wine so it is a very popular problem even you can take part in that kind of competitions so next coming to here tv networks constantly monitor the popularity of their programs by hiring nelson and other organizations to sample the preference of tv views so why it is popular the tv views maybe depending upon that host or depending upon the celebrity which they pick so that is what sample they will be trying to find out what makes the instant to become popular that's all sample of invoices to check for accuracy see this is what the auditing i said account department they will pick the sample invoice they will go for quality check next coming to mean mode median although it is conventional common any data scientist if you approach directly they tempted or directed to calculate mean mode median but we need to be alert whenever we are computing mean mode median when it becomes see look at this whenever mean mode median happens to become same you should be careful you should not rely on mean mode median this is the dangering alarm this is alarming kind if it slightly changes also you can even accept but exactly 999 apart from that look at this scenario there are guys or one particular guy imagine i myself i want to travel from my house to the office i am hiring auto traveling by auto from my residence to the office i am using office transport or else i am using my own car see this is public transport this is office transport this is my own car so what is the number of hours it takes i am trying to find out which is the best method for the 10 days trial run or some days trial run somehow i am doing some trial runs i am noting down if i travel by public transport what is the number of hours it takes if i travel by office transport what is the number of hours if i travel by my own car what is the number of hours because i have flexibility i can change the path or route whichever i feel so so i am trying to calculate look at what is a pathetic situation everywhere this is the classic data sitting and manipulating this data itself would take we need to thank the person who contributed 9999999 what i can infer nothing it says uniformity it is saying then it signifies what it doesn't matter i can go by car i can go by auto or i can go by office transport there is no significant inference i can take out of this now mean mode median calculation failed this situation it failed it doesn't have any expressing power at all for this scenario we should not rely on mean mode median then what we can do we need to go for standard deviation and variance look at the beauty of the statistics the same data i am taking it gives me mean mode median 
so that what i am going to do i am going to calculate variance subsequently i am going to calculate standard deviation now it says see there is no deviation no standard see uniformity consistency is there whenever i am traveling by office transport consistency is there that is one beauty here variance if i go by public transport what is happening minimum variance is what three the standard deviation is three variance is 9.2 then here there is no change at all any day if i start traveling by uh, office transport there is no change at all then the moment i need to compare these two which one i can prefer look at the standard deviation is also lower for this variance is also lower for this now i can take decision what decision i can go by most of the time office transport if something happens if i am missing on particular day i am missing the office transport then my second preference should be own car travel by own car from residence to the office never i should prefer auto sorry i should go by public transport never i should prefer own car see look at this is too high this is 3 9.2 4.9 24 never ever i should prefer own car this is the final inference we can take when mean mode median fails this never should be preferred because it says what see since it is number of points are very less you can calculate or you can take decision through your common sense but when data points are more by the time only these all will be helpful you need to learn the statistics and the probability with a lesser amount of data and you you need to imagine the way of calculations and the patterns for the larger amount of data now what is the use i know you you may argue this is not a point this is for academic learning academic learning always you should approach with a lesser amount of data lesser means 5 points 10 points that's all that all understanding we need to go for generalize towards a larger amount of data so this understand this is for understanding point of view so look at this when it becomes 10000 data point 20000 data point you can't uh, apply your common sense uh, or intuitive knowledge you need to go for the statistical measure when this median mode fails see this failed mean mode mode median fail then we move on to variance and standard deviation both way standard deviation also lesser when compared to this variance is also lesser when compared to this then which one i need to rely on i need to prefer most of the time office transport if at all i am missing then i need to prefer public transport or auto never i should use my car this is the inference finally we got next measures of dispersion variance this variance is called dispersion or variance refers to the spread or variability in the data look at that previous example the variation is more if you look at here variation is more only i can still make with the highest variation look at this still it is a only one candidate got 99 marks rest of all other students got 0 mark 12 mark 40 mark 34 mark if i calculate the variability among these two da these five data point variance would become high here variance would become naturally lesser because the topper mark is 90 all other students are also close to that 90 87 very close then 69 is also close comparatively compared to this group i am telling this group let us say this is group b this is group a highest variance would occur with b the lowest variance would occur with a group it is having consistency more or less this data points are close to each other you may argue 60 56 is very poor mark 90 is the topper i have got 90 that perspective is fine but compare among these two group this is group b group a this has lower variance this has highest variance so that is what you are trying to calculate here using this <coughs> dispersion that's all spread out now finally measures of dispersion you can calculate through range mean deviation standard deviation or variance these are all the possible uh, way to calculate measures of dispersion
Now, look at this scenario. Another scenario. Coefficient of variation. This is simple mean and uh, standard deviation and mean. Sigma stands for standard deviation. Mu stands for mean. That's all you need to do. You need to multiply with 100. Look at this. What is the thing? I am not uh, aware of anything cricket, but let us look at this data. Assume that David and his stay work. The, if you look at David, 150 run, 150 run, 130 run, 120 runs. Look at the run. Next, look at Sheva. Look at the runs. These runs are given. How you can calculate? See, this fellow got 230 runs, highest. Much better than Dravid. But look at one run. What you can say? Consistency analysis, mean, median you are calculating. Mean of Dravid also same, Shevag also same. Median of Dravid also same, median of Shevag also same. Look at the beauty. Now mean median will not be helpful. In this circumstance, you can go for either uh, the way we calculate a standard deviation variance you can calculate or you can go for coefficient of variation. This what is the beauty of this than even which we have discussed. See. Here we introduce standard deviation variance, but here you can tell the percentage. That is the beauty. 24 percentage Dravid will have inconsistency or 84 percentage Shevag will have inconsistency. Who is more consistent? This person is consistent because inconsistency is lesser. That is the beauty of coefficient of variation. We should understand when to use what based on the scenario. You can't apply everything for every problem. You should understand that every matrices understand the scenario. Then you need to interrelate both. That is where the role of data scientists not learning the formula, not uh, uh, learning the model. Context understanding what context what we need to do, how we need to approach is the role of uh, data scientist. Coming to the interquartile inter range, alternative measure of dispersion, less influenced than the range by extreme values. Outliers will not affect interquartile range. That is the beauty of interquartile range. Nothing more. So whenever extreme, for example, I'm, I want to work on annual income of all the students of BVRIT. All of a sudden, some Ambani family, some richest people's person is study. What would happen? That one candidate family income would become, will be affecting everyone. When I calculate mean, if I take any decision based on the mean value or standard deviation or variance, everywhere it will affect. So I need to find out the extreme values. I need to keep it aside. If I look at the students income of this institution, 50% of the time they come in the middle class family or a stall comes in the extremities. Among the extremities, if one person is highest extremity, see top first richest person of India, naturally people even kid can say Ambani. If I attract that person family member in my students group, what will happen? That becomes outlier. So that outlier always pull all the model. It will drag the attraction or attention towards the data. We need to treat or clean, clean the outlier. So in order to go for measure of dispersion, in spite of outlier, we need to use interquartal range. If there is no outlier, more or less similarity is available, then there is no issue. Then we can go with measures of dispersion. When the extremities are more, either low extreme or highest extreme, then it is. <coughs> then we need to rely on interquartile range. For example, in your class mark itself, there may be outlier. It is natural phenomena, but when it becomes data science, it is outlier. I tell you, only one student have got 100 out of 100 in your class. Rest all of you have got 20, less than 20 marks or less than 10 marks or almost all of you have got less than 5 marks. Only one candidate got 100 out of 100. Then that 100 will become outlier. 
this is natural phenomena that star candidate would have studied better maybe question paper tough that particular candidate got the question paper somehow or studied the previous year question paper same question paper would have come we don't know or hard working naturally highest intelligent whatever but because of that 100 rest of all the data points will get suffered when it becomes data analytics point of view i'm telling uh, real time point of view that 100 uh, those who have got we will be appreciating other people need to think for rewriting the exam whatever so this is called outlier outlier treatment or outlier we need to be careful whenever we are into statistical measures so this is a formula you can make use of it for the percentile calculation with that note i am concluding today's session